Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. Today we're continuing our home lab journey and we're revisiting authentication and authorization. But whilst we've already touched on things like Orthelia and Authentic, today we're moving into the big leagues and we're talking about Keycloak. Now Keycloak is a Red Hat sponsored solution to authorization and authentication and it's a bit more like the bigger brother of those two I've just mentioned. So it's going to do things like single sign-on, identity brokering and social login, which is a big thing. So you'll be able to log in with your GitHub account or your Google, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is. And you'll be able to use that account to actually log in to all of your local applications, which is pretty powerful, right? So not only is it an identity provider, it also can do things like federation by tying in with your LDAP solution that you might have. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to deploy it and <laughs> it's taken me a while to figure out how to actually get this nice in a Docker Compose file. We'll go through that in a moment, but it's safe to say that the documentation wasn't fantastic and even things like the variable names are not consistent. So once we've deployed it, I'll show you how to integrate it into Proxmox and Portainer. So you'll get single sign-on with both of those applications. So you'll be able to use the same account within Keycloak to log onto them both with just one click, which is pretty awesome, right? So let's dive into a quick feature review of Keycloak. Then we'll walk through the compose file and then we'll get onto deployment. So over on Keycloak's website, you can see all of the features and the benefits of using this solution. So not only is it open source, which is a massive win for a company like Red Hat to be sponsoring it, but you can also see all of the different features and integrations. So here you can see a quick sneak peek of the UI and we'll come onto that in a moment. The identity and brokering solution. So you can see here examples with Google, GitHub and Facebook and basically anything that supports OpenID, Kerberos or SAML and we'll come onto that later. We can do federation with things like Active Directory or any LDAP solution. And there's a really cool handy admin console so that once we've got this deployed, you can do all of the management through the web GUI, much like Orthelia and Authentic. You get the ability to manage your account, revoke passwords, update details. And that's important because depending on what you're wanting to share with your applications regarding your Keycloak profile, you might need to update that over time. It's built upon standard protocols, so OpenID, SAML and OAuth2, which are pretty much the industry leaders in their respective fields. And to give you a sneak peek of what it will look like when we set this up, here's my key cloak that I set up earlier. And if we log into the administrative console using my username and password, you can see that I have a whole load of options available to me. And we're not gonna be able to cover all of the options in this video. But what I will show you is the OAuth section to it, which will allow you to replace Authentic and hopefully give you the tools and enough information to be able to go and configure this for all of your applications that support it. So heading over to the deployment, let's have a look through the Docker Compose. Now, believe it or not, this took me quite a while to figure out because the documentation isn't great and there's a lot of conflicting older documentation because things have changed, it's being rapidly developed. So the first thing that you'll notice is this is a multi-container deployment, albeit it's only two containers. So we're back with our good old friend Postgres for our database and Keycloak is gonna be storing all of its keys and all of its persistent data within this database. So there's nothing here that's fundamentally different from previous installations of Postgres. We need to specify a database, a user and a password. And I recommend that you store these in an environment file for security and ease, but I'm not gonna do this for this demonstration because I wanna keep it nice and simple. The main thing to do here is just to specify a volume on your Docker host and make sure that that's backed up. I've created a new network here called Keycloak and both of these containers will be on that network. And that's pretty much it for Postgres. So the interesting part now is in the Keycloak. So for this Keycloak, I've made sure that I've added the traffic labels and put it on the proxy network so that it's gonna have SSL certificates and it's gonna play nicely within your browser. That was the easy part. 
I've also added it to the Keycloak network so that it can connect to the database. Now, the tricky bit here was all of these environment variables, because as you can see, some of them start with KC, some of them start with DB, and some of them start with Keycloak. And I don't know why that is. There's a lack of consistency, which is really confusing. But hopefully you can use this and get it up and running on your end. Here we can see that we're creating a command to start this, and this is going to run it in production mode. You can do it in a start dev mode, it'll put it in a dev mode if you wanted to go and do some development with it, but I'm going to assume that you just want to get this up and running within your home lab. Within these variables, there's nothing too much to take note of. The way that this is configured is so that it will run behind traffic. So we've got that there's a proxy address forwarding true, which is true. We're going to be letting the proxy do all of the SSL termination and forward those requests. I've set the host name to be keycloak.jimsgarage.co.uk. It's going to act in edge mode and HTTP is enabled. If you don't have that, it's going to request a certificate, but we want traffic to handle that certificate for us. So we run this in HTTP. You can see down here that it's using port 80, which is the HTTP port. And we get all the benefits of still having the SSL because we've got traffic in front of it. Other than that, it's straightforward. We just need to specify the database credentials, which you can see are taken from the previous container. So before we deploy this, we're going to want to make sure that we create this folder location here so that we can be sure that the persistence stays between reboots. So on your host, create this folder here, and we're gonna to wanna to create PostgreSQL underscore data, in my case, in the Keycloak folder. So I'll create a new folder. I'm going to call it PostgreSQL underscore data. And there we go. But there's one last thing we need to do, and that's to change the permissions of this folder. Now, Postgres expects to be running as user 1001. So we're going to need to do a chone, a change owner, to reflect that. So over in your terminal, you're going to want to run sudo chone change owner 1001 as the user 1001 as the group and you're going to specify the folder that we've just created so when we hit return we should be able to do a refresh within winscp and with any luck we should see that reflected so yeah here you can see that the owner is now 1001 and that's great we're now in a position to go and fire up the container so let's do a sudo docker compose up dash d. Now I've already downloaded these containers just to help with this video, but when we run that, hopefully it should download and you'll get the following message that it's created those containers. Once you've got the message that's on screen, let's hop into Portainer and just make sure that everything's okay. Now over in Portainer, you can see that both containers have been created. So let's check the database first. That all looks good and it says the database system is ready to accept connections. Great. And I did note when I was playing around with this beforehand that if there is any issues with Keycloak not being able to connect to the database, this container usually is in an exited state, i.e. it's crashed. So this is looking good. So let's check the logs. This all looks fine. Looks like there's a lot going on here, but that's usually a sign that it's connected to the database and it's creating all the tables and files and records that it needed. And perfect. At the bottom, you can see that the added user admin to the realm master. We'll get into realms in a minute. But that's good. So everything is up and running and there's no errors in the logs. And as you can see in my Docker Compose file, I've specified the URL to be keycloak.jimsgarage.co.uk and I've added that record to my internal DNS resolver so I should now be able to hit that within my browser and be greeted with the dashboard. Brilliant. We've managed to get in OK. So to continue, you want to hit the administration console and this is the bit that I gave you a sneak peek of earlier. So it's going to load the admin and then it's going to ask you to sign in. Now, your credentials are within your Docker Compose or your .env file. In my case, it's simply admin password. Obviously, make sure you change this. But once you've specified those and you log in, you'll be greeted with the actual dashboard itself. 
So here you can see some of the server info and I can't go through all of this in this video but I will be coming back to Keycloak in the future. But you can look through here and check a few things. The first thing that you might want to do is go to the users and assign an email address to your admin. Now this will be useful for not only things like password resets etc but when we come to tie this in with Portainer and Proxmox we're actually going to use the email for our profile so that when you log into Portainer the email that you specify here will actually be what's created within Portainer i.e. your username. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to change the email address to jim at jimsgarage.co.uk. Now I recommend that you go and verify this email but I'm not going to do it for this video just because it's not necessary. But that will allow you to do things like password resets etc just in case the worst things happens and you get locked out. So go ahead and fill out any details you want to on the user page and once you're ready click save. Those should now be saved within Keycloak and that's pretty much it in terms of the absolute bare bones configuration for users. Now I did just mention about Realms. Now Realms are basically where applications and profiles etc can sit. So you could have multiple Realms if you're running this in say a more enterprise setup. You might have different business units, different business functions, etc. And they could all reside in their own realm. Now, I'm going to keep this real simple. And this master realm was created when we started up the container. And this is the one I'm going to use for the video. But if you wanted to specify a different one, you could just click create realm. You would go and give it a name and save it. And then you would quite simply just change all of the clients that we're going to create and users, etc. You would just attach them to this realm instead of the master. It's pretty straightforward. But how do we actually get this now set up? Well, it's not too dissimilar from authentic, and that's a good thing. So we're going to head over to clients, and you'll see that it's already created some clients within the master's realm. We're not going to use any of these, we're going to create a new client and it's going to be of the type open id connect because we're going to be using open id for this open auth is great because it's good for authorization but open id is better because it doesn't just do authorization it also does authentication so it's better from a security perspective so we're going to leave that as the default and i'm first going to set this up for portana so the client ID in this case will be Portainer. I'm going to give it the name of Portainer and I don't need to give it a description but feel free to give it one if you need to. We're not going to keep it always in the UI but you can do if you want it will just give you a link on the UI itself. We're going to click next. Now we get into some of the trickier bits or at least some of the bits that you have to put on right or it's not going to work. So on this page I'm going to turn client authentication on so it can authenticate with the respective app. Authorization is going to be left off because I'm going to be doing that within the respective apps. So for example in Portana I'll specify what the user can do i.e. the user that we created over here in the users tab i.e. that email address. We can control that within Portana. The rest are going to stay as is apart from the service as account role which we need to turn on. Now we can click next and we need to specify a few more URLs and we'll have to do that for the home URL, the valid redirects, the valid post logout and the web origins. And when you're done it should look something like this. So now you're ready to hit save and that should show up on the page afterwards which is right and you can scroll down and just double check that that all looks right. So now you have all of that saved and it's correct. We need to head into Portainer and you're going to need to log in as your standard user, i.e. I think it's called the local database user, which will typically be admin and your password. So I've just logged in using my admin username and you can see that here in the top right. And to get this up and running, we need to hit to settings, authentication, and then we need to click OAuth on the right hand side. 
Now you want to specify single sign-on as on and you can also do automatic user provisioning which is pretty helpful. So what it will do is when you log in with Keycloak it will create that user. So in my example it was jim at jimsgarage.co.uk so the first time you log in with Keycloak it's going to create that user for you. Now you can disable that and create it manually if you want and I'm going to tweak that in a minute so that when that user logs in, they're actually an admin. But the bit that we need to focus on first is if we scroll down. So much like in our authentic video, you need to pre-populate all of this. So copy what's on screen and I'll have a copy of this on my GitHub. But the key bits that we need to populate are the client ID and handily this time it's just Portainer. And the client secret you can get from back in Keycloak. I'll show you that now. So heading back over to Keycloak, you want to click on credentials and then hit the copy button here. Then we want to go back to Portainer and we just want to right click and paste that in. So now that's there. And I've set this up already with the correct endpoints. So it's pretty much pointing back to my Keycloak installation for all of them, except the redirect URL, which is going to be back to Portainer. The user identifier is the email, and that's why we set up the email within Keycloak first. So this is the account it's going to create within Portainer when you first connect. And the scopes, so what does Portainer have access to? It's going to have access to your email, your open ID, which is in Keycloak, and your Keycloak profile. So let's save that now. And just before we log out and test this, I recommend that you create the user. So in my case, it's jim at jimsgarage.co.uk. And I've toggled this button when I created it to make sure that this user is an admin because I want to be able to use this account to administrate my Docker environment. So now that's all ready, fingers crossed, I should be able to hit the log out button up here. And now you should get two new options. So previously we've been using use internal authentication, but now we can click login with OAuth. And where we specified all of those URLs in the OpenID settings, this should now go to Keycloak, be authenticated already because it's got the client and the secret. It should be able to pull that Keycloak account and then the user in the top right should reflect that we're logged in now as jim at jimsgarage.co.uk. So here goes. Everything worked and as you can see at the top, I'm now jim at jimsgarage.co.uk. I'm able to click on my environment, look at all my containers and I'm an administrator. So brilliant, we've now got single sign-on with Portainer using Keycloak. So now that we have this running for Portainer, let's try and get this running with Proxmox. So pretty much the same process in Keycloak itself. So we want to go back to the clients. We want to create a new client. And this time we're going to create Proxmox. So you probably guessed that. So I've called it Proxmox and given it the name Proxmox. Thankfully for Proxmox, the defaults are going to work for us. So let's hit next. And just like Portainer, we're going to tweak this for our Proxmox installation. So for me, that looks like this. So I'm going to hit save. And we're pretty much good to go. So now we need to head over into Proxmox and key in these details. So over in Proxmox, you want to make sure you click on your data center. And then you want to click on the realms. And you want to click add and we want an open ID connect server. So click on this, and then you're gonna to need to input the details for your setup. So in my case, this is gonna be my key cloak, but importantly, you need to append the realms and then which realm you're using. So in my case, this is the master realm, but you would change this to whatever you're using. So here for realms, I'm gonna specify master again, the client ID is going to be exactly the same as before. So for me, it's Proxmox. And the client key, we need to head back into Keycloak. We need to scroll up, go to the credentials, and we want to copy 
that key. We're going to paste that back into Proxmox and then we're pretty much ready to go. One thing that's useful is to auto create the users a bit like we had the option in Portana and you could tick this to make it the default login option. So when you log into Portana and you get the login box, I think you've got the PAM for the default login that would now default to this authentication mechanism. So the username claim is default, but I'm going to change that to the email because I want that to be my user. The scopes, we're going to leave default because it's email and profile, which is fine. And the prompt is the auth provider, which is default, which is also correct. Now, you'll notice that we don't have to put in all of the URLs for Proxmox. And that's good because it uses the search mechanism within OpenID to get that for us. So it has a discovery piece, which makes our life a lot easier. So let's click Add. And there you can see that it's added it at the top. So much like Portana, I'm going to create the username. So I'm going to click Add. And I'm going to fill this in using the details that I know it's going to pull from Keycloak. And that will look something like this. So once that's all populated, you want to click Add. Don't worry if you're not sure on what these details will be. <laughs> it will be some variation of what I've got. You could just log in and then log back out, log back in with your admin and give it these permissions. But I'm going to click Add. And now I think we're in a position to test this. So if you look in the top right, I'm root at PAM, which is probably what you're logged in as at the moment. But let's hit Log Out. And then if you haven't chosen the default like I didn't, click on the realm and instead click that master. Now, fingers crossed, I should click log in. And there we have it. We're logged in and I've got the user that I specified. I've got the permissions so I can see all of my VMs. And in the top right hand corner, we can validate Jim at jimsgarage.co.uk. Perfect. So now we have single sign-on for both Proxmox and Portana, and you can basically replicate this method for all of your applications. So one final thing I wanted to touch on before I wrap up this video was something I mentioned at the start, and that's the identity providers. So instead of creating your account in here, we're just using the admin account, you could create any that you wanted to, you could obviously just tie this in with any of your existing accounts if you wanted to. I haven't opted for that because typically us home lammers, we want to keep it all inside, keep it nice and secure. But if you wanted to use any of your existing IDs, you could also do that. So for instance, I could click on GitHub. I could then create all of these client IDs and secrets for GitHub and then use that account to log in to all my services. So when I click log in with OAuth on Portainer, it's going to ask me to log into my GitHub. It's going to trust GitHub. It's going to pass on those credentials and then it's going to log me in as long as I'm authenticated with GitHub. You get the idea. So I hope you enjoyed this whistle stop tour of Keycloak. And there's a ton of stuff I just haven't been able to cover in this video. We will be coming back to it in the future because I'm really keen to go through that process of using an identity provider. So something like my Google account so it can pull down my profile and it knows who I am. And I'm also keen to see things like one time passwords and FIDO keys, for example, which Keycloak also supports. So you can use physical tokens to be able to log in to your devices, which is pretty awesome. So let me know what you're going to choose. We now are spoiled for choice with Orthelia, Authentic or Keycloak, and they're all pretty compelling offerings. Unfortunately, Keycloak doesn't have the web proxy, which is akin to Orthelia, which is probably how you've got that set up. So for any application that doesn't support OpenID, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to use it officially. The good news is there are some community projects in that space which help to fill the void and do things like that traffic forward auth. So it will forward the authentication on to Keycloak and use it. But I'm not going to advise using that at the moment just because it's a third party application. But do let me know if you get into that and what successes you have. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Take care everybody.